I have to tell you, I can't do the amended tax return. You're my largest client. You make up 8% of my revenues, but I, we've got to do it right. I have, I have professional responsibilities. In this video, we want to look at what is the income tax professionals due diligence to do an amended 2020, 2021 income tax return as a result of their client getting an ERC credit. Now, before we jump into our discussion, Laura, I want to kind of separate these in a couple of categories. See, there, there is, for example, my firm, we do ERC credits. So we know the, the two sets of rules are gross receipts and the government mandate. But the, the majority of the professionals out there that do income tax returns probably don't do payroll taxes and they're sure not experienced in ERC. I, I've got a lot of good professional friends that said, hey, I, I'm busy, I'm going through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them has referred me work. You know, so I understand that the ERC and not wanting to do it. But now what happens is that when you get an e, when an employer gets an ERC credit, they have to adjust their payroll expenses by the amount of the credit. Now, uh, uh, over I did a video for employers, and big thing there is listen to your income tax professional because you know they don't have any skin in the game. They're not getting 15, 20% of the fee. And I'll give you an example. Over the last few weeks, I've been going out you know, I turn on TV, it's on, late night, it's on, the radio, it's on, my emails are on. I even got, I've even started getting letters that looks like official IRS uh, that I qualify. But I'm going to take a couple examples. And one of them says, well, you qualify for $182,000. They qualify. They didn't do their due diligence to qualify me because in one of them's engagement letter, let me read that to give you a shocker. And that is, you as the income tax professional, you're going to, when you're asked to do this amended return because of this credit, the question is what is your due diligence when you ha don't, don't do payroll or you do payroll and income tax, but you don't do the ERC. Do I just take that credit and put it on that 2020, 2021 amended return? The answer is no. There, there is standards and procedures mm -hmm. and the IRS on a couple fronts, you know, they're putting out, uh, Employers, beware of third-party promoters and proper employee retention credit. March 7th of 23, IRS renews warning of employee retention credit claims. False claims generate compliance risk for people and businesses claiming the credit improperly. Okay, so for a moment, I could say as an income tax professional, I can amend those returns because I didn't do the credit. Well, no, actually the Office of Professional Responsibility, which if you're a CPA, a tax attorney, enrolled agent, you're under their jurisdiction and probably in the near future we all will be, they came out with a notice saying that, you know, uh, and I'll read it. And this is about doing a income tax return amended because of the ERC credit. It says, if a practitioner cannot reasonably conclude Consistent with standards discussed in this guidance, which is due diligence, accuracy uh, of information. So if the practitioner cannot reasonably conclude that the client is or was eligible for the claim, then the practitioner should not prepare the original or amended return, return that claims or perpetuates potential improper credit. Well, the word improper. Mm -hmm. But if I look at this, it says, so I've got to reasonably conclude the client is or was eligible to claim the ERC. Well, I didn't do it and I don't know the rules. So what should I do? At that point in time, when you get that notice, you have a choice. It's a division. I go, you know what? I can't comply with that statement, so I can't do your return. But if you're like most of us in the small business world, CPAs doing small business, we, can, we a lot of times have a handful of clients that make up a major portion of our income. Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, we'd like to retain that client. So you can either not do it or say, can I get somebody else to amend the return? And you refer it to a friend that's a professional and has the experience. But the important thing is, is that I didn't participate again in that 15, 20% fee of, in my case, think about it, 100, I qualify for 182,000. I'll tell you. I don't qualify. 
but I keep being told I qualify. I fill out the stuff, I send it in, and so I t- so we'll go through those warning signs in a minute. So so you can say no. So let's say though, you decide it's it's this good client, and I want to do the work. So what do I need to do? Okay, I just gave you OPR, the Office of Professional Responsibility for Tax Professionals, their conclusion. First thing is that if you decide to do it. I don't advise that. I can't advise you. It's your choice. I either don't do it, refer it to somebody else because I can't get to the standard of the client is or was eligible because I don't know the rules if I'm that income tax preparer. But if there are, a, there are a lot of ERCs out there, credits that are good. So let me dig a little deeper to get a little more comfort of whether I can do it. So what we did on our video to the employers, we t- gave them kind of a list of what to look for as warning signs. There's a big curve or a head on crash coming up. Mm-hmm. So first thing, let's just go through the life cycle of getting the RC credit. And this is what you're going to help to ask your employer before you say yes or no to the engagement. First thing is that, all right, I need to see your documentation. What did you give to this third party? What evidence did you give? Now, I use an example here of one that they told me I needed two things. They needed my gross receipts by month for 19, 20, and 21. Then they told me they needed all of my payroll information. And everything they requested there was all mathematical calculations. Income tax return, uh, gross receipts by month, payroll, they need a detail by employee, and they asked me about my PPP. So here's my stuff. And then they come through with what they call, most of them have a COVID impact, which really what they're doing is the first of two ways to qualify. I'll do it simple. One gross receipts test. I got other videos on how to determine there's a 50% test and a 20% test. We're not doing that today. Then the second one, the way to qualify, there's only two ways to get the credit. The second one, if it's a mandated government shutdown and more than a nominal impact, which generally more than nominal is 10%. Laura, you're going to be my client and I'm the income tax practitioner. I do income tax returns. I decided not to do the ERC. It's very complex. And I know that you've got this credit you received, this $182,000. But we have to amend your 20 and 21 return for that credit. Because if you got a certain amount of it in 20, we got to go in and reduce your expenses by that. Then in 21, whatever the credit was there by quarter, we got to reduce your expenses there. Even though, you know, I've already told you, it's not when you got the check. It's when you, the period, the payroll was qualified, we have to amend the return. Now, what I have to warn you is that I, I, I normally really, it's not even a warning. It's the fact this, this is really, I can't, I don't feel like I get good guidance, whether it's the IRS or Treasury or OPR, but I can only go on the guidance they've gave me. So be patient with me. Uh, I can refer you to Larry's video on employers. Hey, that was a good one. <laughs> no, just kidding. But let's step through some steps. What's the name of the company? Was it online? Was it in the mail? Was it TV? You know, was it a text? So however that was, or was it another prepare? So I need a series of questions just because one question doesn't Mm -hmm. say yes or no. I I keep looking at what I call indicators of the curve coming up. Mm -hmm. There's a series of curve signs. And the more I check, I got a problem. So, Let me review the documents that they requested. I need a copy of that. Do you have a copy of that? Don't pause too long. The answer is no. (laughs) I know you well. I just did check marks. Okay. (laughs) So, so for example, I want this here. This is a a live one. So what did they ask you for? So they asked for my gross receipts and then they asked for my payroll tax. And then they just asked a series of questions of the impact that the, um, that COVID-19 had on my business. Okay. Well, and I see here in your documents that you do have their two pages of information. It took two minutes. 
Well, and actually, some of them doing two minutes, four minutes, six minutes, or whatever. So one is gross receipts. Yes. I, I understood that. Mm -hmm. The second one is impact, which mm -hmm. refers to were you part of a mandatory government shutdown and had a more than nominal reduction in your receipts? Well, they just asked me if it was hard to employ people and if that I had a um, if I had a hard time getting my supplies. And, I mean. It was hard on all of Supply us. Supply chain so, stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, all my friends had a hard time in COVID. You, so. you couldn't, you couldn't get employees to show up. No. Nope. So you had to cut back your hours or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, did they ask you the following questions? Did they say what was the period of your government mandated shutdown? No. Okay. At that point in time, I cannot participate in your credit, but for the sake of having a little mm -hmm. fun here. We'll pretend um, like I said yes. We'll, we'll, well, yeah, but no, it's but the key here is if they if they don't explain to you as a small business employer that the second one there's a gross receipts test, but the second one, mm -hmm. in the, is that was you qualify during a mandated government shutdown fully or partially, and then from there if I'm if if I'm considered essential, that's why they put this nominal. So I'm a mandated government shutdown. If it was more than nominal, so I still had, I was, you know, I was, I could still say in business. If my gross receipts went down by more than 10%, I might still qualify. But if, if I continued, but wait a minute, the area we live here in central Missouri, there was only one mandated government shutdown and it was during April and May of 2020. So I see here, they literally gave you credits in all six periods. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you right now that here in central Missouri, you couldn't qualify for the last two quarters of 2020 and you didn't qualify for 2021 unless, let's say it was supply chain. But there, the supply chain, there's a whole nother set of rules, mm -hmm. but that's too complex for me. Well, and the client should have documentation that they sent to show where the supply chain was impacted from government shutdown. Correct. Right. That, that should have been those sent rules, to the yeah, Those rules transfer ERC. over. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's a good point uh, is because if it's because of a supply chain, wherever your source is, you have to see, could you get alternative? Was all their locations shut down? And then was it more than a nominal impact on you? That all three of those rules have to qualify. And here they just say supply chain vendor interruption. Mm -hmm. So you have checked yes here. But the point is they didn't ask you that. And I think that's the important thing here. That's a very good one because if it's a vendor government shutdown, uh, or excuse me, a vendor or, or supply chain, you couldn't get the supply. You have to go back mm -hmm. to where that source was. And again, all three of those rules have to comply. Did you look for alternative? Was there other sources, other locations? Maybe they had five locations. And the other one had to be more than nominal impact on your business. That's greater than 10%. Mm -hmm. So, so they didn't ask me about more than nominal. They didn't ask me about, or you about government shutdown. So all those say you probably don't qualify. So let's look, I, I want to continue this line of questioning. Um, so, so in their documents, they didn't ask you all the information they needed to in order to determine for you. Now, the other thing I see here were that you brought in your engagement letter and thank you for that because I want to point out to you, for example, these are warning signs, is who's responsible for determining you qualify. And in your engagement letter here, I'm going to read your engagement letter one part. It says here, quote, the client in bold, the client acknowledges they are qualified. The client acknowledges they are a, meaning you, qualifying business entity to claim the employee retention credit, ERTC, in accordance with the guidelines underlined by the U.S. federal government. That's not tax law. That's contract. And it's in English. So when you signed this, you said you have determined that your company, a qualifying business entity. Well, I, they're the expert. I paid them to do but it. But you signed, they took part your, of my your ink dried on this contract. Okay. And the other thing outlined by the U S federal government, I would have thought that would refer to the IRS or treasury. So my point here is there's another, this is an indicator of a curve. 
you just hit the wall. Mm -hmm. It's called stop. So I, as a tax professional, see, we're starting to talk about things that's telling me I can't do the amended income tax return. And that's what this video is about. And, and, and again, because the guidance I have over here, let me go to the conclusion of OPR and read this because I want this to be more of a discussion than, you know, a, a dialogue as if you are the client and I'm the professional. Here's the conclusion on the says issue number 2023-2. And, and I, I think OPR for the guidance, but it's, I would like to have more as a real world practitioner. Mm -hmm. It says conclusion, when a practitioner enters into an engagement with a client who, who has claimed the ERC, so you have claimed it, wants to claim it or ask about the possibility, the practitioner needs to have or gain an in-depth knowledge of the credit, especially its eligibility criteria, especially its eligibility criteria. What you signed in this engagement letter said that you as a small business said you qualified, but nowhere in your engagement letter does it say they're going to determine. Now, they may determine you're not eligible, but the particular company that this is with, I've also went online and looked, and in their advertisement online, they say that over 90% of businesses qualify for this credit. That is not a true statement. So their advertisement is a curve, right? Them not asking you about the mandatory shutdown and the dates, to me, that's a brick wall. Mm -hmm. Here in your engagement letter, when they say client acknowledges they are a qualifying business entity entitled to claim, that's a stop. Mm -hmm. And every time you hear me say stop, I've got to tell you, I can't do your amended income tax return. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you refer to somebody else. But if I refer to somebody, I got to tell them what I know. Because also, and in this conclusion, watch, this just leads into this. It says, the practitioner must also follow Circular 230 requirements of, one, due diligence in the practitioner's advice and preparing and filing returns, including the specific standards of Section 10.34. So I'm doing my due diligence by asking you these questions, even though I don't do the ERC credit. As a result here is that I'm gaining knowledge to the point, I, I've, I've hit two brick walls already in this dialogue. but. Again, this we need to continue this dialogue because now we know that I, I've twice here been told by OPR, I have to gain knowledge and I cannot participate in the claim or perpetuate the potential improper claim. So as we go on through this, I mean, have I raised any questions for you or any takeaways yet as an employer? Well, you keep saying that you can qualify under a gross receipts test or a What's the second one? A government mandate okay. and it be a nominal. more than nominal impact. So the gross receipts test or the government impact, but I don't even know which one I qualified under. And that should have been part of your great, that should have been part of the documentation whenever. So that leads to one. I, I've asked you for the documents you submitted, including the engagement letter, all the payroll and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now you lead in to what documents did you get back from them? And seeing your documents you got back, they should have told you why you qualify. Mm -hmm. They should have explained it to you. So you're sitting here and you don't know why. Mm -hmm. Another, in a, that's a big curve. Yeah. That's between a curve and a brick wall. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I called them and they can't even tell me why I qualify. Well, actually, I'm glad you said that because I've got a friend that she said that she tried to get to the bottom of it and she had to call the third company to get to the source to explain, and she really didn't get an answer. Well, if if I go calling for you, and you've already called, and they can't explain it, let me think about it. Mm -hmm. They're the ones charging you 15, 20%, and they can't explain why you qualify unless they refer to your engagement letter. So and so if they can't explain mm -hmm. it, I, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna recommend you find somebody else that does ERC, or I, there I will help you find somebody that knows ERC rules and have them to look over your documents and to get a second opinion. There's nothing, I, to me, you know, I'm an income tax preparer. I don't have time to tool up and get all this knowledge. So what I'd like to do is refer you over to another person to get a second opinion, or you can find somebody to get a second opinion because I want, uh, you know, you're a very compliant taxpayer. I'm trying to be compliant and we need to do, I need to do my due diligence you need to do your investigation. So again, mm -hmm. you know, let, let's kind of recap real quick. Well, we have one more indicator we haven't covered is the fees. 
The fees? Well, fees, I, like I said, for, for our office doing fees, it ranges from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand because we charge you based on what time it takes. We have an Excel spreadsheet set up. We key in the payroll, or if you can get it in an Excel download, that saves us time because this is like doing an amended tax return on the ERC, no, excuse me, not a minute, doing the ERC tax return. And because of that, then we keep documents of why you qualify because we know if the IRS shows up, you're, they're gonna ask you about what documents did you send in? What documents did you get back? And who made that decision and based on what foundation? Gross receipts test is very easy, but the government mandate, remember, it's from the date the mandate starts till it ends. And if you're fully shut down, it's that payroll, that period that you paid. If you were partly shut down, it's the payroll you paid. Again, government shutdown and a nominal, more than a nominal impact. So if a client comes in and the company has charged a lot of money to do their ERC credit, then that might be another indicator of this being a false claim or a scheme. It, it, it could be. I just want to watch saying that. But that, that that's a curve. So it raises the awareness because actually for me, under under as a CPA under OPR standards, I couldn't charge that fee. Mm -hmm. You're my client. I'm doing something. I may be able to charge a smaller percentage and say because it's complicated. I'm not saying you can't charge a percentage. That's not my call. Mm -hmm. But in our office, we chose to do it by the hour. And we found out, again, it, was, it wasn't even 2 or 3%. So... So yeah, the, fee, the fees are a big indicator. The other one, I notice here that you qualified for all six quarters. I hate to tell you, but there's not been a mandated shutdown going on during all six quarters. So that's a brick wall again. Notice how some of these are curves and some are a brick wall. Mm -hmm. We've now got three major brick walls. So, and I hope what you can see is that, and I hope what you, the practitioner, can see is during this kind of back and forth, I'm helping you, the practitioner, to ask good questions, and you don't have to be an expert because this is this is the indicators uh, of of an improper claim. So you know, uh, do you have any notes of what questions they ask you on the interview? I see you have a few here, but I still don't see government mandate discussed. When they were they sent it back. It sounds like you call them to find out why you qualified, but you didn't get an answer. Mm -hmm. So those are real indicators of, of a concern. I think that's really important. I think the other thing, and I, and I may have said this earlier, but remember now the ERC credit to make an adjustment to that is five years. If I do your amended return, that's an income tax return, and I reduce your expenses by that 182000 and four years from now, they do an audit on you and determine that it's improper or part of this, you know, you, you know, this false claim or improper. At that point in time, you're going to pay it back plus penalty and interest for all these years. But it's going to be too late for me to go back and amend your income tax return. And now you have paid taxes on $182,000. You, you have now, of, my, of your $182,000, you are going to be paying back. The fee that promoter kept that 20%, that 36.2, they're gone, most likely. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to pay back the 186. You lost the income tax deduction and you paid a fee. So when you start to accumulate this, it's 182 here. It's lost your tax rate on 182 over here. And then you got 20%, I'm using a ballpark, it's mm -hmm. about a little over 36,000. It's gone down the road. Do you realize that probably when we get done with, there's a good likelihood that you could be pacing taxes, interest, and penalties of double that amount? But I just want you to be sure and understand from me as a practitioner, please realize I do income tax returns. I'm not versed in ERC. I didn't participate in the claim. And for me to amend the return based on what we've discussed here, we've had at least four brick walls, five or six curves, I have to tell you, I can't do the amended tax return. You know, you're my largest client. You make up, I'll make up some number. <laughs> you know, you make up 8% of my revenues, but I, we've got to do it right. I have, I have professional responsibilities 
and I don't want to be part of what this, and I'll read this to close out. And again, this is not all of the indicators. I have just gave you a general set. But if a practitioner cannot reasonably conclude that the client is or was eligible to claim the ERC, then the practitioner should not prepare an original or amended return. Amended return. That's what we're talking about doing here today. Mm -hmm. That claims or perpetuates potential improper claim. I'm not sure what per, you know perpetuates, but if I participate in this, I may be judged as participating. So again, I love you to death, sis, <laughs> but I can't do your ERC. Or I can't do your income tax amended returns because of the ERC for 2020 and 21. You know, I hope this discussion today has really helped. And I know it's not my normal, you know, very on point. But it was just a general discussion, went back and forth. Most of the time, Laura was my client. Once in a while, she became a practitioner again. Good. Um, but this dialogue, I hope, again, watch it again and go back and say, brick wall curves, brick wall curves, brick wall curves. We've gave you eight or 10 really good questions to ask to allow you to make a decision how far you go in participating Either I can't file your return up front, I just can't do it. Or after going through the set of questions, I can't do it or I can do it. Or maybe I help you find a third party in question. Or uh, I got a, I've got an email to answer to from yesterday. I've got a person that attends my courses out West and his concern is, is he doesn't know ERC, but he's figured out through the questions, they don't qualify because they got all six quarters. So hope this helps. Uh, we do have a video for the employer in case they raise more questions with you. Uh, and in that, we're saying, hey, trust your income tax preparer. They're not the ERC specialist. But whenever I do my research online and see these ERC companies, you know, setting up websites in 22 in July or November, that's another one of those indicators. That's another one we throw in how, what is their experience? Mm -hmm. So again, they advertise in six minutes or four minutes to qualify for 26,000. You've heard that, you've seen that. I hope, it's almost like I wanna tell more, but, and I'll think, as soon as I get off video, I'll think of a couple more items. Most of you that know Larry know he'll do that. But I hope this really helps. And actually, I'm gonna do an unusual outreach out of this. If there's other questions, I'm not going to answer individual questions, but if we see certain questions on about due diligence and accuracy as an income tax, professional dealing with this ERC uh, claim that causes the amendments. Uh, make comments to it and if it rises to another video, we'll do it. Hope this helps. Laura, thank you. See you next time on another video.